All right, so let's take another look at these seemingly strange commandments in the Bible. And this one is muzzling an ox. Why does it seem that God is so concerned about what we do with animals? We see this in Deuteronomy 25 verse 4, and he says, you shall not muzzle an ox when it is trading out the grain. All right, so this is kind of like strange. What does that even mean to muzzle an ox? What, we, what it is, is they would put... Uh, a cover of sort, a cage of sort. Um, you even have seen this with with dogs. They put a certain cage over a dog's mouth so it cannot bite. So they would do something similar with oxes so that they cannot eat of the field it is laboring in as it is trading out the grain. God actually says, do not do that. Allow the animal to partake in that which it is laboring in. And that's an interesting concept because ultimately we can apply this to us and our lives. It's not, it's an, it's for an animal. Like God has grace and mercy and kindness and joy that he even wants to give to the animals that we have today because he's good and he created them. But also he wants us, if, if that's for animals, how much more is, is he concerned with people? You see, like when we think about how this applies to us, we see that Today, you probably have heard this before. Maybe you've been tempted by this. We have this temptation to when we have a friend who's doing some kind of a work. Maybe he's a professional photographer. Maybe he's a professional website designer. Maybe he is a, a graphic designer. Maybe whatever he, his occupation is, we are sometimes tempted with our friend to ask him, hey, can you come and build me a website? Can you come and take pictures of my wedding for free? Can you come? You know, we expect them to give us a big discount. We expect them to work and labor, but not be able to partake in the fruit of what they are laboring in. Because ultimately, if someone is going to be doing something for your business, right? How making a, a website for your business or or mowing the lawn of, of your business premises or doing whatever, they are ultimately contributing to your business. And so you need to allow them to partake and not muzzle them, partake in the fruit of their own labors by giving them a fair wage, giving your friend even a fair wage and not expecting of them to give you some sort of a discount just because they're your friend. Or not just like you won't give, let your ox go and, and just do this for not allow him to partake because it's your ox and this is your field. No, you allow him to. And so, brother and sisters, like ultimately, when we think about this, uh, God, uh, Paul writes about this further in 1 Corinthians 9, 7. Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard without eating any of its fruit? Or who tends a flock without getting some of the milk? If we have sown spiritual things among you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? And he is just saying it is wrong to expect certain occupations to do things at a, a lower cost or even for free. And for him, in his case, he was a minister of the gospel. And he said, if I sow spiritual things among you, cannot I not reap material things? Right. And so. If you have someone who works for you in some small or big way, make sure that you fully pay them back for their services, a fair wage, and go even above that if the Lord permits you sometimes, it puts it on your heart to do, I mean, sometimes, and give them a tip, give them a blessing, because that is what God has called us to be. Because what does it help that we ruin our witness by mistreating laborers, and then we try and proclaim that this God we serve that is so good. God loves them and wants them to be treated well. So treat them well. I hope that this has blessed you. Subscribe to this channel for more looking at strange seeming commandments that you see are actually really beautiful. Many blessings and shalom.